Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, boys and girls, and everything else in between, to the yeah, 42 well, Podcast. You... We have been out for a while, and we apologize for that, but life had, does happen. Uh, two weekends ago, I was in the great city of Seattle, interviewing for a job, and then last weekend, you know, things just happened, and I was tired. Do you know how hard it is to make a down and back to Seattle in 48 hours? No, I don't. I haven't done that. Is it hard? uh, Seattle, Pittsburgh to Seattle. I'm Ryan, by the way. And this is Ryan. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) Hi, y'all. You're a good friend in mine. Don't. (laughs) To (laughs) the left. Yes, as always. Sorry. I've been drinking a little bit. So this is going to be a loosey goosey episode. (laughs) I like it. Uh,. So, uh, Pittsburgh to Seattle and Pittsburgh to London or about 30 minutes different air travel? What? No, wait. Just say that again. Pittsburgh to Seattle and Pittsburgh to London. London is about 30 minutes farther air travel. What? Why? Is that true? Is that how it's shaped? Pittsburgh or Seattle is... Th- almost 3,000 miles from Pittsburgh. I mean, wow. I'm going coast to coast. That's so, incredible. So I get there, right? And it's 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 a three-hour time change, which is pretty tough. So I get there, and it's like 6 o'clock in the evening. It's still sunny out. I sent you the pictures from the restaurant. It was super Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. But my body's going, hey, dude, it's 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> you know? Is that a weird feeling? It is. I've I woke, never done the coast to coast. I woke like up at, that big a time change. I woke up at 4. Like, I just woke up at 4 because I, like, it was, it was 7, 7.30. And, like, to me, it was 7, 7.30 in the morning. It was like, my body's like, hey, bro, it's time to get up. I'm like, weird no, feeling. you're wrong. <laughs> so I get weird up at, like, feeling. 4 and just, like, putts around my hotel room for three hours until the... <laughs> Yeah, until the hotel uh, breakfast bar opens up and go down there. So how did the interview go then? Um, it went well. Um, it is one of the, it's a weird position for me to be in because I really would like the job. And they're going to pay me a lot of money, uh, six figures. Wow. And <clears throat> I am going to turn them down if they offer me the job. Oh, okay. Because I can't work for... Like, I loved everyone I interviewed with. I loved them. They were great people. They were smart. They were intelligent. They were flexible. They were everything you ever wanted in coworkers. But the two people who would be my boss were such arrogant assholes that I couldn't do it. Quality of life decision. Quality of life, yeah. And the thing is, like, so, you know, like, a couple weeks... A couple weeks ago, that big expose from Amazon came out, like how terrible working for Amazon actually is. Because no, I didn't see that. Oh, it was a big deal. It was like in Time or uh, the New Yorker, New York Times, right. something like that. Okay. And it was all about how, like, you know, so many people like uh, if you're not if you're working sixty hours, you're not putting in enough time at Amazon. Like that's just how it is. And they will rip you apart. And, like so many people, like go home crying because like they have been just just so destroyed by their bosses and their bosses. And you know, I didn't put a lot of stock in it. And then I interviewed with two people who spent five years at Amazon, and those guys are jackasses. Really, like, just be- dicks, huh? Oh, bad. The thing is, is I do something. There's one thing I do in this world incredibly well. It's simulation modeling. Right. And the thing is, is I'm I'm maybe the only second generation simulation modeler in the world. My dad is first generation, and uh, he is 30 years PhD, one of the best in the world, and I am right. damn near as good as he is. So nice. when I say I am best in the world, I fucking mean it, and I have examples to back it up. And these people wanted me to do simulation modeling, but wanted me to do it in Excel and Python and not give me the tools to do it. They're like, they're like, well, I just want to make sure, you know, you're good at what you do and not just the tool. That's like, 
that's like us saying, hey, J.J. Watt, we want to make sure you're good at uh, hitting a baseball, not just, you know, going after a football. I mean, that's mm-hmm. basically what they're telling me they're doing. Or, like I say, it's like asking my trout to say, hey, we want you to explain the physics behind hitting a baseball and not just hitting a baseball. I'm not like, I can't tell you the ins and outs of the back end of it, but I can fucking do it. And I'm right. I'm one of the best in the world at it. It's just, it's sad too. But I did charge them for one good meal. <laughs> nice. Because like, so they put me up at this really nice hotel. And so I figured, you know what? I'm going to go. It was the last night I was there. I was tired. I'm just going to go get a nice dinner at, the hotel restaurant, you know, not unreasonable. That's where they put me up. That seems like a normal thing to do. It's one of the few menus that made me do like actually in, made me do the blink test where I, I looked at the menu and I actually blinked a little bit to, like to get an idea of the price. Yeah. You look back and forth. You're like, is this for a family of four? Exactly. No, this is one person. I, <laughs> I picked one of the cheapest things on the menu is a seven thirty uh $37 sir- sirloin. Oh. And that was that was ha- less than half the price of the most expensive thing on the menu. Literally, it was, it was like I could pick that or one other thing for like tw- like $31. That was the cheapest thing on the menu. Wow. <laughs> was it good? It was pretty good. I mean, good. Me- Great old fashioned, and give that bartender some credit. Heard a crazy bar story. What's that? I'm interested. So, uh, I, I asked the bartender, um, I was like, So, and I asked her how long she'd been bartending there, and it's been a couple of years. Like, what's the craziest story you've heard? Which is all if, if you ever go to a bar, just, just ask the bartender, Tell me your best story. And you're just gonna you're you're in for a good to, good time, okay. And uh, so she was like, "Yeah, there's the, there was the bellman who's still working here, so it was within the last <laughs> two or three years." Right. Who uh, this uh, room ordered a gallon and a half of milk, but and since they didn't, they don't they charge by the glass. So it was like thirty dollars of milk. Wow. Yeah, because they you know it was supposed to be like an eight ounce segment. So he takes it up there, you know, on the bell hop, you know, bell, you know, bell hop cart, right? And he uh, gets in there, and there is um, two black ladies going at each other in the bathtub. They're, what an interesting place to do it. They're well, some manager or pimp of some kind, and some cameras. And they asked him to pour the milk on the girls while they were fucking. I heard that story three times at that hotel. Oh, so I yeah. think it's pretty true. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so apparently, so, so any, any of our listeners, if you ever see a porn with two black girls, Two two black lesbians going at each other with milk being poured on them. I probably know where that took place. <laughs> By the bellboy. <laughs> and if you find it, I'd like to see it for science reasons. For you know, science, yes. For research. Sir. For research. Um, that begs the question, though. Are you you do you pour the milk? <laughs> I tipped them well. They tipped them like a hundred bucks. No, no, no. Would you have done it though? That's not. Oh the question, yeah, though. yeah. You're sh- you're just doing your job at that point. I, I mean, like it. You're just doing your job. You okay. gotta figure if you're a bellhop <laughs> in one of those kind of hotels, like I mean, you gotta understand this is this hotel was really nice. It was on the water in the Puget Sound. It was right by where the cruise ships launch. Okay. So like you know, I was I was walking to a uh, to a restaurant from the hotel, and I could hear the captain of the cruise ship talking to the passengers that were about to launch. Like it was, it's that close. Yeah. That's so this cool. is where the rich people stay before they go on a cruise. Like it's a nice hotel. You just got to right. figure that kind of shit happens. <laughs> you know? It was like, as long as you don't show my face, it's okay. Yeah. I'm into it. Fuck it. I do it. It's just your job at this point. 
I like it. Just your job. If they tip answer. you well, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Ladies and gents, tip your wait- waiters and waitresses. It's one of the best decisions you can ever make in your entire life. Why is that? Well, especially if you make a place sort of your own. Uh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, sort of a cheers kind of environment. So here, here's the best example I can give. Um, there's a place in Tulsa called McNally's. Uh, is where, like, it was me and my wife's default place to go. Uh, their beer was good. Their food was good. The service was great. We'd always sit at the bar. We knew all the bartenders. We always tipped well. We almost got, at least every time we went there, we almost always got at least one drink for free. Almost nice. always. When I told them I was leaving, I got three steaks for free. Because every bartender caught me a steak. Wow. And Grant, I've been going there for like two years. And Let's tipping tip well. Waiters. Right, but I think, yeah, if, if someone gives you a free drink, you fucking tip them. You yeah, tip them before, the drink with even the tip. before then anyway. You just tip them. It's like yeah, that's, back. That's how you get the free drinks. That's how you get so the free know. drinks. Is and it creates a repertoire, and they know you, and even the people who don't know you know you because they don't want to piss you off. Because if you know if some fucking bellhop or you know bar you know table clear pisses you off, that bartender is going to jump down their fucking throat. And so, oh, yeah, no, it, it works out. If, it, you, if you can afford to do it, do it. Tip well. That's, that's one of the best avi- p- pieces of advice I can give you forever is just tip well if they deserve it. And especially if it's a place you go to regularly. Yep, I agree. But this begs the question, do you agree with tipping? I mean, that model of... That model, that's ridiculous. To put the burden on me as the patron, to pay for your employees is bullshit. I know it's supposed to encourage good service, but I don't think it works. I just think it makes for a minimum wage job that that um, gets fulfilled with by minimum wage skilled employees. It's like I really wish I could find a professional waiter. waiter. And I wish I didn't have to go somewhere where it was super expensive to have a professional waiter. Mm, no, that's, about, that's, yeah, that's a whole different question. <laughs> you know, like if it was... If you got paid and so what's okay, so the way the tipping system works is if you're a shitty waiter, you don't get tipped, you quit your job. Unless you're a shitty human being who's okay with making shit money because they're work you know, because they're living home with their parents or they're going to college and living off daddy's money or whatever it is, right? You know, or they just live really shitty, you know what I mean? They just they live in poverty and they blame everybody else. And they get bad tips, and they're mad, and they're you know just shitty humans, and they still get to keep their job. Whereas if if it was paid the other way, where if it was costing the um, the restaurant money somehow, or I don't know, I just I guess I guess that loses. I mean, the restaurant doesn't want you to have a shitty waiter, so if you complain about your waiter, they might get fired that way. Oh, they will. They will fire them quick. But I just don't like how the responsibility is on me. To make those decisions, should be on the it should be on the restaurant. What do you think? Uh, I can see both ways. To be honest, I, I well, the problem is a lot of restaurants already share tips, so every like all the tips from the waiters and waitresses are shared between all of them. Which, that's in some places, yeah. That's in a lot of places, but. You know, I like rewarding people for doing a good job. And if that is being attentive to me and, you know, not being attentive to other people, I'm okay with paying for that. Well, it's just fine if you, like, slip them a 20 or a 10 before the fucking meal starts, right? Like, hey, here's your tip. You're working down from here, right? Like, but that's douchey. I don't want to be that guy. I just, I just wish that responsibility wasn't on me. I just wish I knew if I went to a restaurant, it was just I knew I was going to get good service. Well, and that's the uh, the other side of the coin, right, is you don't know you're going to get good service either way. If they're being paid $10 an hour, $15 an hour, they just may say, fuck it, I'm taking the night off, you know. 
That's true. And so but I wish they didn't judge me as much. Uh, like, oh, it doesn't, it's like a, he's a 21-year-old kid. It doesn't look like he's going to tip. So I don't get good service. It's like I'm the guy with all the money. I don't have a wife or kids. You know, like you remember being 21 and you couldn't get your tea filled? You know, because oh, you yeah. were just some young punk kick that didn't, you know, they, didn't, they, they thought you were just going to order water and chips or something. It's like, I'm not. I wanted the steak. Please come over here. That stuff. That's the stuff I hate. Yeah, you know, that's tough. And I mean, Grant, I, I grew up in much, well, at that point in my life, I was in a much smaller city than you were. So I right. had a bit, I had a bit better experience with uh, wait, wait, wait staff. Oh, sure. If you're in a place where they call you hun, <laughs> it doesn't matter what age you are. Yeah, no, yeah, and that 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 definitely happened a lot, you know. <laughs> it did. He had a, he lived by a place that made the best fucking pancakes on the planet Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. <sighs> uh, good old Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's a small yeah. town, and if you're okay with living in a small town, it's a really nice place to live. Yeah, it's a nice place. It really is. Beautiful sunsets. Weather's good. Gets a little hot in the summer. A little hot in the summer. A little cold in the winter. It's ridiculously cold in the winters occasionally. And like, occasionally you got to worry about the tornadoes, but, you know. <laughs> and earthquakes recently. Earthquakes recently. I was actually, uh, so I moved from Oklahoma to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and people were, were talking about how terrible the weather is here. And so I actually came up with a really good analogy. And it was like, look, unless you are literally afraid the weather is going to murder you, yeah. you don't have bad weather. Like you're going to die. No, that literally once a year in Oklahoma, almost you anywhere you are, die. you <laughs> might die. Like, fuck, that's, mean, a, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and granted, Tulsa... Tulsa is on the low end of that, but how I remember uh, one year out in uh, western Oklahoma, like Kingsford, Oklahoma, it was dropping basketball-sized hail, like like bigger than my head size yes. hail. It was going through roofs and the second-story floor. My God, man! Yes, I mean it was that bad. And what do you, you do? You get on the first floor bathtub with a mattress over you? Yeah, basically. You're fucked. Hope I for mean. the best? <laughs> yeah. Dude, crazy. what does that happen if it hits your head? You just die, right? You're dead. Yeah. Or no, That's and a... there were stories like about how like like newlyweds, like where the man like just pulled like pulled himself over his wife and just took it and just you know. Like it was like there were some super sad stories like where they got married that weekend and something happened and Well Bo. He, well bro. What are you doing? What are yeah. you doing? You've been drinking some beer or alcohol? What are you doing? Like, <laughs> come on, man. People are driving to work and shit, and now they're all, like, teary-eyed. I know, right? So For sure. Do. Talk about something better than that. <laughs> For sure. So, um... Oklahoma's got crazy weather. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you might get touched by the finger of God or get a rock thrown on you from heavens. But here, here, they just bitch about, like, four inches of snow. <laughs> 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 uh. But if you're not afraid for your life, you don't know what weather really is. I'm only afraid for my life down here if I get locked outside in the summer. Or that, like, like, that one random hurricane comes burling in. Oh, I didn't give hair. So I lived here my whole life, and I've been through a couple hurricanes you know, that barely miss you, or you get the edge, and it, you know, right, it rains right, and yeah. it sucks, and you lose power, right? And then we went through Ike. <laughs> and we actually, like, ate a motherfucking hurricane. Like, just ate it. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Hurricanes are fucking terrifying. Especially when you're cocky and you don't, you're not afraid of them, you know? So you're sitting out on the porch. You're like, yeah, I think it's getting close. And the trees are, like, all moving. And then, like, 15 minutes, like, 20 minutes later, they're, like, trying to touch the ground. And you're like, I think we're going to die. It's like, what are we going to do? I don't know. <laughs> It's just this fucking just lightning and just wind. And you think of it, or I thought of it, I don't know if other people do, but you think of it as the wind's going like one way. No, right? it's going like just, all the ways. No, it's going all the ways all the time. It's a really weird <laughs> thing where you're seeing trees twist and blow and then I was like, holy shit. Yeah, it was... I'll, I'll have to find it because I put it up terrifying. on YouTube, but... Uh, 
we had a bad tornado come through Stillwater. Ter- fucking tornadoes are terrifying, and I too. I had one of those, uh, like, I don't know, small square video recorder things. I don't even know what they're called now. They didn't live very long once GoPro came out. The H1N ones or whatever they were? Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I turned it on and I duct taped it to the porch. Did you really? Yeah. It's somewhere on YouTube. I got to find it. But yeah, you can just see like it go. I think the video is like 16 minutes and it goes from super bright to like super dark crazy you know, in this short period of time. Y'all had like a concrete vault with like a steel door, right? My parents did. Yeah. When they lived in Oklahoma, my parents are gone from Oklahoma now. They are. Yeah. They're back down here in Texas. Down back in Texas. Your yes. mom should fit in just well down here. <laughs> just do okay. They got a nice house, man. Half beautiful. a million dollars. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I think their house up, uh, I mean, this is their laundry or whatever, but I think their house up there did okay, right? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a great home. I mean, that's no, where. I, when they sold it, they did all right. Hey, that's where I grew up. Uh, well, the thing is, the crazy thing about Oklahoma, especially when my parents were in Oklahoma, is. Uh, when my parents bought their their property in uh, two thousand, they paid uh, nine hundred dollars an acre for thirty acres. Wow! They sold it for twelve thousand dollars an acre plus the house. So you can just do the math on that. Oh, your dad did okay then. Yeah, he did okay. Yeah, he did okay then. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> shitty at math, but I, I think he's in the black, right? Yeah, yeah. About, about, yeah, yeah. Free about 200, 200K. You know, no big okay. <laughs> Ferrari in the black, but okay. That's nice. He deserves it. Good man. Uh, yeah, I'm actually interviewing for a job back there in the, the Tulsa land. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Be cool but, if you can make it back down to here, man. Yeah, yeah. Oil I, rigs don't need simulation done. They don't need simulation done in Enron. That's, I, that's not been, a place anymore. No, that's not um, a place anymore. Chevron. I mean, I've been trying, yeah. man. I've been trying. It'd be it's, cool if you live back down here. The thing is, like, when it comes to simulation professionals, there's like a thousand of us on the planet. Oh, <laughs> like low well, demand. Uh, low demand. And low education is probably a lot of part of a lot of it. Like, unless you have been taught what simulation is, you probably don't know what it is, you know. Or unless you know someone like me who does it for a living. The big companies are hip, though. Uh, like some Amazon are. And, see, no. Amazon and, no, fuck no. Amazon, man. No, they're fucking stupid oh. about that shit. Hey, y'all. Fuck you, Amazon. <laughs> We would like you for the affiliate link sponsorship, though. If we could get that, <laughs> that would be nice. So, well, the problem is, like, what I do, what I do for a living, and I don't think you know if I explain this to you or to the listening audience is, I create mathematical and computer models of systems. So, say you're a factory, right? So you're producing cars. And you want to know what's what it's going to do to say, we're going to add a fifth line to our production. So you say you're, you're creating like four lines of cars and you want to add a fifth line of production. Okay. Well, that's going to cost you like $15 million, oh, right? Man. Or more or less, depending. But with simulation modeling, we can build that all inside of computer Build that fifth line and say, hey, look, this is exactly what's going to happen to your throughput if you build this fifth line. It's going to cost you like $100,000. So, I see. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's what basically what I do for a living. And it's a very... Save a little bit of money then. Or a lot of money, depending. Oh, well, you're right. Yeah, for saving them from mistakes. Right, well, and I, and that's the big thing is it's saving people from mistakes. So, like, uh, one of my big projects when I was young uh, was I built this rail model for a port in on the West Coast. They were like, we, will, we want to add a rail spur. What will it cost? What, what, what will happen if we build it? And so we built this entire rail spur inside this system. It cost them, like, $250 million, $250,000. And we showed them that it was going to be worth it economically. And, you know, they ended up making like 
thirty million dollars the next year because they added the rail spur. I like it. Yeah, so uh, that's what I do for a living. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. What? Why? Why are we drinking? I don't Is that know. Something we do for funsies. Oh. I like it. <laughs> so anyway, you out there driving to work. Cheers. Fuck you. Anyway, so I am. Re- I, I've been watching some videos over the week. I am so down with the drone racing. Ugh. I like there was a there's a there's a league in Detroit. Okay. Like where they fly through like this like the old like abandoned like warehouses and shit. Yes. But and they they had all these videos up of like wipeouts and shit, and they're all oh. from like first person views from the drones. They're brutal. Oh, it's so good! I love it, love it, love it, love it. Yeah, it's a blast. I got my little drone. I've been flying it around. I don't. I can't. I have. I haven't been able to manage my funds in such a way that I can afford one of those yet. But I sure do want one of them. <laughs> Mine will only do maybe twenty twenty miles an hour. There's seventy. 80 those things are fucking flying yeah, dude was, and they're so cr- powerful they can do flips and stuff like in the middle of churns and it's just like ah and it's fun to watch have you seen the one uh this may not be interesting but if you're out there and you have an interest in this look up quad race star wars quad racing and it's where they took uh quadcopters and they're racing them through the woods like through the trees and each one of them has a different color led on the back so as they're passing each other, they've got these, you know, you can see these LEDs in it, and they put uh, Star Wars sound effects in. So, <laughs> it just looks like, oh my God, it really is Star Wars. It's cool. It's a cool video. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, those things are getting crazy, man. Yeah, the future's was, here with those. I was actually, oh, hey, drink. I was walking through, uh, through the future. I was walking through Best Buy today, and they had a drone for sale in Best Buy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it was a big fucker. I mean, it was like probably you like don't buy any without talking to me. You can buy well, a professional quality grade one at Fry's. Do y'all have Fry's up there? We don't have Fry's up here. That's a what about micro thing. centers? No. 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 Oh, micro centers, awesome, dude. Micro centers. It's like the internet in the real life. Like the prices are in like internet Wait, prices, this, and they've this got like was big. It was like two by two. Was it styrofoam? I don't know. I just I just kind of watched it. I kind of yeah. w- looked at it going by. It was like pointing my wife like, "Oh, look at this shit." Yeah, the three <laughs> D like seeing the three D printers and stuff. And that's it's like we are just we're in a we're weird here. place, man. We're getting close. We're getting close. Man, I look creepy now that the the sun's gone down. <laughs> Anybody's yeah. watching the video? I'm sure I do too. Yeah. No, you look good. You look good. Your life's a lot better than mine. <laughs> So what do you think of uh, my sexy voice coming over the new mic? It, it sounds very good, very loud, very uh, lots of baritone. My bad. No, no, we'll get the, the we'll get the. No, it's good. It, it sounds natural. It's just stronger awesome. than I'm used to picking up. Well, I can turn it down. Like if that ends up being a thing, we can turn it down. But uh, my friend, my uncle, let me borrow. I've got this big giant Mackie mixer, and then I've got like a Sterling Audio ST55. <laughs> That's like a two hundred dollar mic. Yeah, no, but it's like it's like yours. It picks up everything, and I yeah, live with a house full of kids and stuff. Fucking sexy. It is, isn't it? I love. See what you thing. need to get if you're worried about uh, worried a about picking things up is entire. getting a uh, drum mic. This is a a dynamic mic. I know, a, no, no, trust me. I know exactly what those are. For those of the, for those of you who don't know, I used to run concerts for a living when I was much much younger. Yeah. Yeah, so I know all so, about yeah. mics. I used to run a 72 channel. And That's what, awesome. What we used to do, and it, we had intelligent lighting, which is awesome. Yeah. Because what it did is it, there was a, there was a program that picked up the, uh, the sounds that were coming out of the sound system, and it would move the strobes and the lights to the beats. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. But what we used to do is, so we would have like four bands in a night, right? Oh, mm-hmm. that's, that's actually. Yeah, and so what we do is we would, uh, we would pull them out on a, uh, on a notebook and have all their, their settings on a notebook. So we, we would only use like the first like 16 channels. Sure. Because there was wired bad and everything else. 
and we would just we would have we would have four layers of painters tape and we would have lead guitar bass guitar lead singer like all the mics everything else all on painters tape and in a in in a book yeah that's a sexy mic and we would just go through and we would have a 20 minute and if anyone who's ever gone to a bar we would have a 20 minute band change at most so we would just like we would set everything up for the first band they would go we would rip off the painter's tape turn the page to the next band put everything up we'd be ready to go in like 10 minutes like the sound was ready to go faster than the band could ever set up we had like three guys on stage helping them get stuff off it was legit it was one of those things where i wish i could have done it for a living but sadly i couldn't <laughs> it would have been cool though to be an organizer it would have been cool it's just me i was probably in the wrong place right should have gone to a different college for that or a bigger or just you know if i want to do it i probably should have moved to a bigger city yeah yeah makes sense but yeah it's been fun though yeah i've done uh over a hundred live shows Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's I did uh did thirty shows a year for three years. Nice. That's cool. That would have been cool if you could have made that. You could still make it. Fuck it. You're in a big city now. Buy a board, start producing, get some bands, put a show together, battle all the bands at a cheap bar. Well I think here's the thing I'm thinking about doing is uh there's this really good venue here called uh Stage A E. It's actually sponsored by American Eagle, so A E. And I'm really thinking for all the fans of the Super Nerd Sixer, we're gonna do a, a live Super Nerd Sixer. Oh wow. I just go fucking nuts. That would be crazy. Uh, that's what I wanna do. Like the thing is I can't do it I can't do it day in, day out for a living. I just can't. Like there's not enough money. All everyone else has already spoken for pretty much, you know. Like the venues do it all them like all the big venues do it all themselves. There's not enough money, but I if I could do one last great show it would just mean the world to me. That would be cool. What was the name of your company? Great Rock Show Productions. Because yeah. one great rock show can change the world. I liked it. Yeah. From uh, from School of Rock. If you have great movie, I love School of Rock. If you have not seen it, you should definitely watch it. I'm not a big. Uh, oh, Jack Black. Jack, yeah, I'm not a big, not a big Jack Black fan, but I do love him in that movie. I liked him in that movie. Huh? I like, I like half of his movies, and I seem to like him as a person. Like his personality seems to be really cool. He's way better in as a supporting role. Yeah, and uh, and that's the issue, and we're gonna evolve into movies here. But like, so many of you all try to make the uh, id, id uh, psychology term into the whole movie, or it's just not what it is. And uh, and you you see a lot where, like, uh, where uh, Jack Sparrow got his own movie in the Pirates movies, and it was terrible because he's not a was lead. it. Yeah, it was, he's not a leading character. He's a great right. dynamic supporting character Correct. who ends up stealing the show a lot of times, but when you break it down cinematically, he's a terrible lead. Interesting. These things I don't know. Makes sense once you say it out loud, though, I guess, right? Yeah. It, hmm. It's all about figuring out the balance of movies and ideas and especially like i've been you know like we uh, talked about last time or two times ago you know we're ri- we're writing a book like we are writing we a are book. writing a book and the first episode is going to be on amazon in like a week and a half or less and like, we're going to comic-con we're hopefully if if we have enough people we're going to motherfucking comic-con but anyway uh you know it's something you got to think about when you're designing stories and episodes and like, so anyone who's listening, watch your favorite episode of your favorite show. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter. And really look at it critically. Like who's the lead? Who's supporting? How, what is the, what is the actual story arc? 
what are the the points that are happening to push the story forward when is a story being pushed forward and when is a story being explained those things a lot of people never really understand because they never look at a, a show critically but if you ever if you you break down any any episode it always happens where there's a setup there's a middle and then there's dynamic things that happen in the episode to push that story forward there's a conclusion and there may be some trails that filter on to the next episode depending on the story you're watching daily month do what the daily month the part that after the climax exactly so i, I challenge anyone take your favorite episode of your favorite show doesn't matter mm-hmm. what it is star trek breaking bad sons of anarchy Arrested development doesn't matter. You, it's going to follow that well, you, you'll formula. Be, if you look at it in that way, you'll be able to see it. Right. You'll be able it's to like see. It's like listening for the bass in a, a song. Exactly. You listen, then you can hear it. Yeah. Exactly. So, what else has been interesting about happening? What is there anything that we could just talk about? I was trying to think about what happened in the news recently. There's been a lot happening in the news. I don't know if I want to talk I about I guess we could talk about Trump. Talk about or Trump. We talked about Trump last time. He's still Trump. He's still Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, Bernie I, Sanders is picking up some traction. Um, he's leading in almost I know, every poll. That's what I mean. He's got the pot guys behind him anyway. Um, Cl- Clinton's not going to make it, man. I am so glad. She's she, the evil overlord. No, I... If... And this is one of the interesting things, and I'm really interesting, interested to see how it happens, is the Obama administration has been the most uh, aggressive administration for punishing information violations. Yeah. It's like four or five X Bush. Like hardcore, like they, they every little thing they they punish and they send everyone to the jail for the next time so it'll be interesting to see if mm-hmm. they do it for clinton yeah because i when, am really curious because it's i don't think at this point if i don't think at this point it's in any doubt that she was doing something highly illegal on her own server like what do you think what could she have done that would have been so illegal insider trading no, of... no, she was she was harboring secret and top secret clearance information on a unsecured server outside of the United States government servers. Weird. Why yeah. would she do that? Uh, what advantage is there in that? Deniability. How, much, how does she make money? What does she do? Well, part espionage. Of, uh, it could be espionage. It could just be she's trying to run a government because she was secretary of state for what six four six years i mean she was our top diplomat okay it's not like it's not like she was a small person in government she was no yeah no i know fifth ranking person in government and she was trying to hide her information so she was having everything come into one device i mean maybe it wasn't done just Maybe it wasn't done for any monetary Furious. gain, but it was definitely done for political gain because Clinton's old school. She yeah. thinks she can hide. Because the thing is, is... Welcome to the modern day. Hillary was one of the people who helped prosecute Nixon. Oh, for the Watergate or whatever. Exactly. And so, if you watch your entire political career, man, it's been trying to oh, hide no, evidence yeah she's a hawk oh she's terrible yeah well um i'd hate to say it man but out of everybody right like if, if i had to choose right now i'm choosing bernie and that's not a good thing and that's the problem right it's it's not, it's a, not good a good thing, thing. <laughs> we should just vote for cthulhu just why settle for the lesser of the two evils vote for smod the Smod. sweet meteor of destruction. Okay. Why why vote for the lesser of two evils when you can just vote for destruction? <laughs> I like it. I like that one too. The you know, flying spaghetti monster. Vote Jacob twenty twenty. Jacob, 2020. I am not a crook. 
<laughs> you are not a crook. <laughs> uh, what job do I get? Uh, I'll make you, you in charge make of the me White Secretary House. Secretary of the State. No. Sorry, Red. Come on! Come on! We would have so much fun. No, no, we'll just make you in charge of like the White House staff. So we'll we'll hang out every day. Okay. Yeah. But you're just All in right. charge of making sure the maids do their shit. And you're getting paid like three hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. <laughs> and I you get to live at the White House. That's interesting. <laughs> you would see some shit. No, you wouldn't, because we're gonna have a closed White House. <laughs> what? No. Why not? I, I I live there and I wouldn't see anything happen. Oh, you would see some shit. I'm saying yeah, everyone I, else I'm saying. listening. On. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm saying like I would. I'd that you see some shit, wouldn't you? If you oh. lived in the White House, I bet there's some things that you just happen to be part of that you're like flying crazy, spacey, you know, I, like hairless monkeys. That's where the war room is. Yeah, you know? the Oval Office is there, right? Yeah, that's where the Oval Office is. That's where the war room is. So like, some maid. Was probably making like a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, but some maid is like delivering tea while, you know, Obama is delivering the strike order on Bin Laden, or or Bush is saying, you know, take out these people or whatever. You know? Oh wow, that is crazy, right? You know, and you can't talk about it. No, sure. You know, like you've never, you like you cannot talk about it. It is national security, and that's the thing. That's the thing that has pissed me off about this entire fucking Clinton thing. Is people are like, oh, she was just trying to email like a normal person. It's like, you're not a normal fucking person. You're the Secretary of the United States, for fuck's sake. You're. If I were to do that, I would get fired. <laughs> and you are a stupid, normal person. For my stupid logistics job, I would get fired. Much less being the Secretary of State for the United States. It's just bullshit she knows some secrets too right like she would know stuff that would be important to keep oh she uh she's had the highest clearance like she wow. knows okay. she knows where the aliens are and that might be her cutoff okay that, that it's pretty like, good if cutoff. she doesn't know where her if she doesn't know where they are that's where she, that's the only thing she doesn't know is basically yeah. where the aliens are that's what it, that's the uh, obama knows yeah she's she doesn't know that, and she doesn't know who killed JFK. You gotta get, you gotta win the presidency before you go back in that smoky room. <laughs> like, look, we got alien technology, and we want you to watch this video. <laughs> you see what happens oh, when you man. don't play ball. Man. Like, okay, my hair is gonna start turning gray, and I'm gonna do whatever the fuck y'all tell me. I've heard like, a man. lot of stories. I've seen a lot of evidence, but if I'm putting money on, it's LBJ. And it's really? like, it's LBJ and Lady Bird. Who? Who's Lady Bird? The gun? LBJ's wife. Oh, you L think she was part of it? Oh, I, if I were putting money on, I would say she was the orchestrant of it. Because LBJ was never going to be president unless JFK died. Out of all of the theories I've ever heard, this is not the one that I thought... <laughs> I'd have never even heard this one. Oh, no, so L I thought this was an FBI thing. No, no, no. so LBJ, right? Oh, no, an IRS thing. LBJ was, was um, the senator from Texas. Okay, Texas who, would do something like this. <laughs> who ended up being JFK's vice vice president? Right. <clears throat> so the fact that happened in Texas, a little thing. bit, and Lady Bird Johnson. That was her name. Her nickname was Lady Bird Johnson. Like crazy like like they do like like, like if you like think no, no no if you think about like political awareness like she puts bill clinton to shame much less hillary clinton to shame like she was a political hawk like she yeah. knew it all like she had she had her folders on every person in congress every person in senate like hey if you fuck up i'm gonna just release this kind of data about your right Mm -hmm. She was that kind of person, and I, if I were putting money on it, because her, she was never going to be the first lady, unless JFK was put down, and that's my, that's where I'm putting my money. Who did they say shot him? Oh, fuck, I don't even remember. Do you think he did it? 
Well, do I think he shot him? Yeah. Do I think he... Wasn't paid? No. But do you think there was another shooter? I don't think there was another shooter. I, I think do. he shot him. I don't think the guy from the window at the library actually hit him. If you watch the Zerpruder film or whatever it's called, it just doesn't look like it. It just doesn't look like it. The The head splits from the back. It goes backwards to begin with. And I've heard a lot of people saying that there's like nerve shock damage that would cause it to jerk that direction. But also a 308 to the left eyeball would also make it do that. You know, that backwards with the head explodes to the back. It's just... Right. He, didn't, he got shot from forward, from about his level. Like, he didn't get shoot, shot from the top. And there's also that one guy who got... There was, um, you know how they have to account for the magic bullet? Because yeah. it, it hit like a curb and like ricocheted up and hit somebody. There was more than one shooter. There was lots of shooters. They, that dude was dying. There's no doubt about it. They were going to kill him. Did you know the information for the, the JFK papers become unclassified in 2017? Interesting. Like we're not far from knowing the truth. The question is, is how many people are actually trying to kill JFK? Oh, right. Because it could have been one of those things. Because, I mean, look, he was open air cab, which was. Everything about it was wrong. Everything about it was wrong. And set up. Everything about it was, like, set up. It, like, seemed set up. So maybe it was. Maybe we're. It was the FBI, Lady Bird, and. Some communist. Some right, communist. Some commun uh, because there were some communists who took credit for it afterwards. Right. Maybe. I just don't think it's like they're telling us. So and then all of the weird shit that happens afterwards. What? You know, the funny thing is, is JFK would go down as one of our worst presidents if he had actually stayed alive. Maybe. I'm interested. He's the one who sent us into Vietnam. Nixon takes the fall for Vietnam, but JFK is the one who sent troops in. I don't know my facts well enough. I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah, I'll take my word for it, and I promise you it's true. Huh. Totally wrong. Yeah, he was. So he go- created North Vietnam. Yeah, oh, he created Nam. Yeah, that's weird. I was yeah. watching Mash. I didn't realize it was about Vietnam. And then when you start watching it, and then you're this far away, like separated from it, and you're like, oh, this is it's about North Korea and South Korea. About Korea. Well, yeah. <laughs> Air quotes. Not Nam. North. Oh, I had that messed up. North Korea and Vietnam. That's totally different. Nam was the one about the hippies in the 60s. Right. Korea was in the 50s. Korea was in the 50s, yeah. Korea, the Korean War created North Korea. Yeah, basically. And the Seoul as capital mm. of South Korea. In range of ballistic missiles from North Korea. Good idea. Good idea. Man, this has been a funky podcast. Just hey, we're out of rhythm a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, it, well, we've been, we were gone for two or three weeks, and we apologize for that. We really do. But oh, yeah. special thing coming up in the same room, 42 podcasts coming like another month. Ryan's coming to Pennsylvania. That could happen. That's, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. Pod, you're going to get a podcast with us. We're just going to be drinking and bullshitting and doing whatever. It might be a long rambling podcast. <laughs> you might just get us drunk watching YouTube videos. But it'll be uh, entertaining. I, I feel sorry for it. all of you listeners. Because it has uh, been since like the last time we actually hung out, like not just like not around the wedding or anything else, it's been like four years. Mm-hmm. It's been too long. Before you got married. And I'm gonna too long. I'm gonna long, make you some of the uh you know, the certified Jacob Old Fashions, and we're going we're gonna to get drunk on oh, some no. bourbon. Oh, yes. I'm so bad at drinking. <laughs> Ooh. I was drunk last night. Oh, yeah? How'd that yeah. go? I hate getting drunk, it turns out. Like, I was smashed, and we were... I wasn't driving, but we went to one of those... Um, so it's a big, giant patio with, like, a cover where, like, a band plays, and they got a, bun- a bunch of picnic benches. Right, and then they have an open air bar, like where you can kind of like walk up and order drinks, and then they have like five or six food trucks that park, like in a semicircle around the porch. Nice, and it's all these different like 
you know, nine dollar French fries that have like mayo and cilantro and chili cheese and you know whatever all this crazy shit on top, and then chicken tenders and barbecue, and there was a fusion Mexican Korean barbecue thing. Right. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It was fun, and we were there and we were drinking beers and woo we. I got there. Did you, did you go too fast? Was that your problem, or were you just there for like four no. hours and just? Yeah, I'm, I'm. Well, we pre-gamed, right? And we started. We pre-gamed a little hard. Hard. And I'm kind of a lightweight. You know, I only uh, need six or seven drinks to be like pretty gone. So define your pre-game. I want to hear your pre-game. So, he had a beer that was six percent alcohol by volume, okay. which isn't you know that good, or, but it's not pretty it's not that bad either, right? tasted just like root beer i mean just like root beer so i drank two of those and um a shot of tequila big okay. old fucking shot of tequila though to like a double one and a half one and a half okay I'd take a shot glass and fill it up till it's like spilling over you know like a okay. full shot uh-huh. yeah it's yeah. legit and then we went there and we had a beer and uh i had a long island and another yeah. beer i'll get you there yeah, and we were there for like two and a half hours, two hours. Whew. And then we went back and we finished the bottle of tequila between three people. <laughs> That's a good way to go, my friend. It's a good way to go to the bathroom <laughs> on your hands and knees. All crawling in there going, oh, God. If you, just, if you just save me, I'll never drink again. I'll never even look at a liquor store. Uh, yeah, I got, I got messed up Friday night. Sadly, it was one of those like bad ones where like your wife goes, "Hey, do you remember what you said to me last night?" And you go, "No." <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. I, uh, I yeah. love you. That's what I said, right? Like that was part of it. <laughs> I love you, bro. That was a thing. Uh yeah, it was. Just, it was a bad night. It was. <sighs> She's like, "No, the word bro is not what I'm upset about." <laughs> well, the thing is, luckily, I've been with my wife long enough. She knows when I turn bad because, like, when drunk Jacob comes out, like, bad Jacob, bad drunk Jacob, yeah, because uh-huh. I've been like, there are many, there have been many nights where both of us have just been hammered off our asses and we're just Goofy. having a good time, and yeah. but she knows when I turn dark and she just can like pass it off. Like, yeah. I was like laying on her tits in the morning, I was like, Am I a bad person? She's like, No. <laughs> I'm like, it's like oh. a little bit, a little bit. I'm just your wife, and I'm going to tell you no, because <laughs> I'm a good wife. Yeah. But so yeah, I I fucked up Friday night. What were you doing? What'd you drink? Uh, so here's the problem. <laughs> I'm gonna... Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm going to explain to you exactly what happened. It's, just, it's not my fault, okay? <laughs> no, it was my fault. I just I let it get to me is what the problem. Was. So. Um, <laughs> I ordered these really nice cherries. They're like Sardo cherries. They're from Italy. Like <laughs> you're such a weirdo. <laughs> it was my wife who said I should order them. <laughs> like they are super sweet. Like like imagine a maraschino cherry, right? Like right. just that red, super red cherry you pop for like on ice cream or whatever. Yes. Well, this cherry is completely black. And three times as sweet. Wow. I did not expect this. So I so I just make up my normal fashion like normal, right? So I got I got an orange, I got four cherries, some a sweet vermouth, and a shit ton of bourbon. I'm like, oh god, this is really sweet. So I just kept trying to even it out. I don't know when I blacked so out. So there's like five ingredients in that drink, and he was only using bourbon trying to equal it out. So yes. Just add a little bit more bourbon. Not another orange. Not some vermouth. No, just add a little more bourbon. Should, this should even out a little, okay, eventually. Yes, yes. This is, this is drunk logic for you, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Look. Don't trust the Booze is amazing, self. but don't drink. <laughs> don't ever drink. It's the worst thing. It's just drunk logic for you. So, like. <laughs> you know what would make this better? More alcohol. I was home for like an hour and a half, and I only re- like that's all I remember. like. I got home at like eight, and I know I was in bed by ten, and I don't remember anything past by eight forty-five. 
<laughs> it was fucking terrible. <laughs> I am not proud. <laughs> I am not proud of that. Uh, doesn't make it any less awesome. <sighs> but I did sleep for 16 hours that night. That works. I went, like, Oof. me and my wife went to bed at 9. We woke up at 1 p.m. Like, so we went to bed at 9 p.m. We woke, we woke up at 1 p.m. Saturday morning, or Saturday afternoon. It mm. was fantastic. Yeah, it sounds lovely. Do you got blackout curtains? No. You just slept through the, you slept through the sunlight anyway? Fuck it. Yeah, we were out, man. We were just out. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, like, should have gone to the hospital. I was, like, in a coma. I wasn't really sleeping. Uh, I've just, I've been. I was just not dying. I've been so messed up since Seattle, man. Like, that fucked me up so bad. Like, the down yeah. there. It sounds like exactly what you wanted, but you can't have it. Are you, you no, you know what I mean? Like, it's such a, a torn thing. It's like, here, you get to have this Ferrari, but it's going to ruin your life. Well, yeah. Damn it. I mean, and it was really cool because, like, I went to this really cool bar and met these, this really cool dude and... We were talking metaphysics and all this other shit at this bar in Seattle. It was really fun. But, God, it took it out of me. Because, A, like, one leg of this flight is five hours. Like, in a plane, five hours. That's hard to do. Yeah. And granted, Delta, I'll give them credit. They got some really nice in-flight options now. Like, they have, like, 30 free movies you can watch. They have Nice. I pretty much watched the entire eighth season of Big Bang Theory because I had nothing else to do. It was all free. So I, I, get, I get big props to Delta there, but it it's tough. Oh, it's yeah. so tough. And plus, I was, I was in meetings from 8.30 to 2.30, and I, I was in meetings through lunch. Like, I was interviewing. I interviewed with, like, nine people in five hours. It was so fucking stressful. Sounds like it. And I don't know. I I have a hard time like dealing with that, like that thing in my mind, because like they need me. They 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 need what I do, but they just don't want to give me the tools to do it. That's so it's weird. Like, it's like telling Patton, "Here, go win the war without tanks." That's basically what they ask me to do. You're like just, we want to understand that you have a strong grasp of strategy. You were like, yeah, the strategy is use the fucking tanks. Exactly. That's that's, that's the strategy. I just see really is one of those things. I was I was talking to my dad about it. Like so, my parents called me and he's like, and I was like, so, and so I gave him a brief overview of what I'm doing right now, and I was like, can you do that in Python and Excel? And he said, no. And anyone who asks you to do otherwise is fucking stupid quote and your dad's pretty good with excel <laughs> no my dad uh crashed a top of the line macbook a, a macbook pro with a four gig excel file <laughs> who does that this guy that guy <laughs> that guy so yeah i mean it was uh, anyway sad times but if you can go to seattle but especially now that like Uber is really a thing, go to Seattle. Yeah. Just book a, book any hotel you can find cheap downtown or like in Belltown. Book any of them and just walk. Like I walk like eight you miles. You can get pot in Seattle too, right? Oh yeah. No, no, no. I was walking through uh Pike's Place. Pike's Pike's Place where they throw the fish. Like that's Yeah. All sorts of weed, like all sorts of guys just like sitting out there smoking. Awesome. And uh, I'm yeah. ready for that future. Uh, yeah, but like it is, if you can go you to Seattle. accept that job. I'm, I'll come see you more often. <laughs> if they give it to me, I will, but I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I understand. Like, I don't blame you. It's one of those things where I look at it and if. If I remove the two people who are my bosses out of the equation, I take it at almost any number. Yeah. But put those people in it, like the people I have to deal with, who I report to every day, mm -hmm. I, 
come oh, they would have to throw like 160 at me just to me just even to give me consider it man like it's, that's how much i dislike those people right and i can put up a whole lot of shit <laughs> yes and i've done it for anybody out there for anybody out there who needs a simulation expert who can handle their shit you know the guy i'm the best in the world yep this is and I've told I've told some people this, and I'm the best in the world without a PhD, and I'm better than most of the world, most of the PhDs in the world. Right. So, but hey, maybe I'll just move down to H Town and call it a night. The weather's fucking terrible down there, but at least I'll have a good friend. That's true. Maybe we should move to Colorado and start selling cars. We should we should move to Colorado and be waiters. We could go skiing. We'd have a flexible schedule. We both just live in like a two-bedroom apartment. You get the back bedroom. I'll take the the front bedroom. Well, you got kids, awesome. though, man. Damn it. I forgot about that part. <laughs> Damn it. Other than that, it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect, yeah. We should have done that when we didn't have kids. I'm still, I'm still trying to move to Colorado Springs. I've actually applied to a job with the city there. Fuck yeah, dude. Colorado's. I have a friend who's there right now, and she's sending me Snapchats. I just quit opening them. I just it's like I don't I don't really just so want sad. This. Yeah, just stop sending me this shit. <laughs> you know, like she's at like a bar and she's taking like the selfie and it's like well lit and it's like on a wooden deck and then like behind her's the Rockies and like you see the city's kind of lit up and the Rockies and it's a beautiful sunset and you're like, "Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't need to see that. I don't need to see that." You know, see, she's that was that was the thing I was talking to like some of the bartenders at this hotel, right? So the bar the bartenders face the Puget Sound. Like, that is their backdrop for their entire day is the Puget Sound. Water lapping up, mountains in the background. I asked him, I was like, do you ever get distracted? I'm like, yeah, for the first week or two, but I don't even see it anymore. Yeah, you get jaded. You get jaded. It's sad, but it's true. It is. It is. But I think in Colorado, like, there's so much beauty and awesomeness. Like, it'd be cool to be able to go mountain biking in the summer and skiing in the winter and uh, I just, legal smoke and clean air and sunshine. I cannot wait to put my toe edge into a, a good a good fluff of snow. Oh, it's a good feeling. That's – I love I, – I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but one of my all-time favorite things in the entire world to do is snowboard. I haven't been, I, I own my own board. I own my own boots. I haven't been in like four years, three or four yeah. years. God, maybe even longer than that. But like the last time I went was in Keystone, Colorado. And I had this friend. Um, he, he lives in Colorado now, but his parents have owned a timeshare in Colorado for years. And so he got, a, he got, um, a week every year that nice. him and his wife would go. And he's like, hey, you want to go to Colorado for a week? And it was a Saturday. So, like, I flew, it, flew in on a Saturday, flew out on a Saturday. So, full week in Colorado. And it was 500 yards to the lifts. Nice. And so, I'm just walking, you know, you just walk out of your board and just... I actually hit a run the moment it opened up after they, they groomed it. Like, nice. Oh, it was so perfect, so surreal. Just, just your first guy down, no tracks. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like it's the skiers were all trying to be the first one down, so I wasn't even trying to do that. I was just like, it was just perfect. It was just like your mind and your body is working perfectly together. You're going as fast as you possibly can, but whenever you want to pop your pop to your toes, you just pop your toes and back to your heels and back to your toes and flat and just going down and it's a blue you know it's, it's not like a green or anything it's a blue it's just oh, so good there is nothing better no uh, well there's a few things yeah <laughs> that is one of the best feelings in the world it's just putting your toe edge into the ground and just there's a lot that go into it yeah there's a lot that goes into it but that feeling of just flying. It's like yeah, especially when you're heel when, edge and you... especially when there's enough like powder. Yeah. And you can't really feel the grind. You just feel the powder. You just whoosh, 
Oh, it's yeah. so good. Ah, oh, it's the best thing in the world. Yep. It's one of my all-time favorite things in the world to do. It's been too long. I haven't gone skiing in forever. It's been I need too to do long. That. Well, we have slopes up here. They're not Colorado, but we have slopes. So, Colorado still exists, too. Colorado uh, still exists, too. What I'm saying is you could Colorado. just come here and <laughs> cut out the hotels. Yeah, y'all need legal weed. I want to go to Colorado and smoke and enjoy it. Okay, so you can, you can write the future. What is that future? Um, what do you mean? Like, what kind of question? What do you mean? You you can write the future. <clears throat> if you had the the dec declarational pen, write all the laws, all everything for the United States. What is that? What is that? For the world? world or the United States? Period. Just period. I get to be God. I get to be you, God. Huh? You get to, you get to be God for a a day. And then you get to live Let's in that world afterwards. See, I would give us all self-driving cars. That's the thing I would want. Self-driving transportation. Period. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. You'd be able to send, you know, be able to send up uh, trains and trucks and. Mm -hmm. Um. Everybody gets like ten gigabit internet, like everybody. And any device that connects to the internet gets like 10 gigabyte internet. Like, let's just make it awesome. Your cell phone's fucking awesome. You're as fast as you can possibly think it. For a long time, right? Just yeah. really, really fast. Um, let's see. I would change like the. I would change a lot of the uh, private law systems. You know, like we wouldn't. I would change a lot of that kind of stuff. Like a lot of government things, I would fix that I think would be kind of boring to really discuss. But like police departments would no longer. Um, like retain the revenue from tickets the revenue would go somewhere else we would take some of the incentives away to take some of the evilness out of human beings and stuff if we could like I would rewrite some of that stuff um, I think I think this would apply for everybody so everybody gets internet like all over the whole world I think that would fix a lot of our issues very quickly be cool if we had a universal translator if you're on the internet if you have two devices that is connected to the internet we can communicate with each other Pretty effectively, right? I think that would be nice. Um, I don't know. Do we put us under one world government or not? I, don't I think we would unify anyway, right? If we could all communicate clearly. Maybe. But I think nationality... I mean, even look in the U.S. where we're pretty ubiqu ubiquitous communication. We still have state pride. Like you, true. You, you talk to a Texan and yeah. you call them anything but a Texan, they're going to fucking punch you out. No, well, not really punch you, but we will at least, you know. We're going to dare to correct We're going to ask you what you mean by that. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? You think I'm from Tennessee? What? Yeah. No. Wrong, well, sir. <laughs> well, Tennessee's a little bit different. But yeah, you know what I mean. We have a saying. I'd rather be a fence post in Texas than the king of Tennessee. <laughs> like, that's a thing. People say that, so. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not sure, though. It's, Being it's, the king of Tennessee would be pretty fucking cool. It's hard not to love Tennessee, though, as a Texan. You know, for, from David Crockett, you know. Yeah. You can all go to hell, and I'm going to Texas. Yeah, right? but I will go to Texas. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is pretty cool. I don't know. My world would be pretty utopian. A lot of communications, free energy. I think free energy would be a big deal. And I mean free energy for everybody. Like, it's no big deal. Like, if you plug your car or your computer or anything into a wall, like, you've got electricity. Like, there should be not just the energy is free, but, the, like, the infrastructure. Like, I would put infrastructure everywhere. And that's, there's always a direct... the ex that's always the expensive part is the infrastructure. Right. But there's a direct correlation between how expensive your energy is and how much we get to do with, like, how much our production, like, how much we produce. Right, exactly. So the more energy, the cheaper energy is, the cheaper everything else is. It's very if you have true. free energy, you almost have free stuff. For the most part, yeah. Hmm? 
Vote Jacob Ryan 2020. Yeah, That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Free energy for everybody. That'd be or at least we'll try. <laughs> yeah. There's some crazy ideas, though. Like, if you go to the moon because it doesn't have an atmosphere. Solar panels. The sun... Um, it also... The sun produces... Bombards it with hydrogen-3. It's a hydrogen atom with an right. extra uh-huh. whatever. And it's extremely, extremely efficient to build a fusion generator with hydrogen-3. Like, the amount of energy that's put into a fusion generator is, like, it, it puts out twice as much. Like, it really is really good. But the only place you can get hydrogen-3 is on the moon. So, we set up... We, we, instead of that trillion dollars that we spent destroying Iraq, we spend a trillion... The next 10 years' trillion dollars get spent going to the moon and, you know, mining free energy. Man, I've been thinking, like, because uh, SpaceX has a big thing in Texas. Really been... Well, like, if you want to go, like, work in a factory for SpaceX, just move to Waco. Like, really? they're, Yeah, no. They're hiring all the time right now. Oh. Like, it's in McGregor, Texas, which is, like, 10 miles outside of Waco. Right. So, but yeah, I've been looking at it. If, like, if a job opens up, I'm going to, like, just... Hardcore spam. Because you know what? Most of the people in Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley are too vain and they don't want to move to you know, Waco, Texas because they think it's too podunk. It is a little podunk. It's a little podunk, but we could and have a whole, good time and there. And that whole thing happened. That was, god damn, 20 plus years ago. It still happened. It still happened. People still, people still think of it. But still, I got to have a good time in Waco, Texas if they pay me enough money. Yeah, yeah, and you're close to Fort Worth, so. Close to Fort Worth, close to Austin. Not too bad, not too bad. Brothers there, you know. Yeah, family. Yeah. Uh, Well, we need to call this soon, Jake. Yeah, I think so, too. Dinner's ready and the kids got to go to bed soon. All righty, well. Oh, hey, it recommends. Get a hobby. I recommend you get a hobby. Yeah, that's good. Something that you can enjoy and that it's your hobby. I mean, I mean, you can share it with other people, right? But find what you enjoy. Don't try to find one with your wife, but try to find one for you. Like, find yourself a hobby. Something that you can kind of use as a meditation device. If, you know, some would say, I guess. It helps to obsess. Yeah, Especially sometimes. when the days are long and sometimes you don't get much enjoyment out of your job. It just helps to have something to obsess over. Right. That, does, that it doesn't require a lot of anything else. You don't have to succeed in it. Right. You just have to like it. And that's all that matters. It. Do it. Yeah. 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 So that's it. I recommend Absolutely that you, um, everybody should have a hobby. And if you don't, you should find yourself one. And if you're nerdy and you like this podcast, you might really enjoy Magic the Gathering. Word. And it also provides an opportunity to go play on Friday nights with other like minded nerds. So or that's, Dungeons and Dragons. It's a good Dungeons and Dragons really also. Those things exist yes. for 30 year olds. They're actually more popular with 30 year olds than they are with 20 year olds. So. Yeah. Get out there. Yeah. You might find it enjoyable. Ladies and gents, thank you once again for coming to the 42 Podcast, where as always, we're talking about the failings of the late great human race. In the future, drink. Or you're good at uh, hitting a baseball, not just, you know, going after a football. I mean, that's mm-hmm. basically what they're telling me they were doing. Or, like I say, it's like asking my trout to say, hey, we want you to explain the physics behind hitting a baseball and not just hitting a baseball. I'm not like I can't tell you the ins and outs of the back end of it, but I can fucking do it, and I'm right. I'm one of the best in the world at it. It's just it's sad too, but I did charge them for one good meal. Nice, <laughs> because like so they put me up at this really nice hotel, and so I figured you know what I'm going to go. It was the last night I was there. I was tired. I'm just gonna go get a nice dinner at. The hotel restaurant. You know, not unreasonable. That's where they put me up. That seems like a normal thing to do. It's one of the few menus that made me do, like, actually in, made me do the blink test. Where I, I looked at the menu and I actually blinked a little bit, like, to get an idea of the price. Yeah, you look back and forth. You're like, is this for a family of four? Exactly. No, this is one person. I, <laughs> I picked one of the cheapest things on the menu is a seven thirty uh thirty seven dollar sir- sirloin. 
Oh. And that was that was ha- less than half the price of the most expensive thing on the menu. Literally, it was, it was like I could pick that or one other thing for like tw- like thirty one dollars. That was the cheapest thing on the menu. Wow, <laughs> was it good? It was pretty good. They made me good. great old fashioned. I give that bartender some credit. Heard a crazy bar story. What's that? I'm interested. So uh, I, I asked the bartender. Um, I was like, so I asked her how long she'd been bartending there. And it's been a couple of years. Like, what's the craziest story you've heard? Which is all, if, if you ever go to a bar, just just ask the bartender, tell me your best story. And you're just going to, you're, you're in for a good, good time. Okay. And so she was like, yeah, there was, the, there was the bellman who's still working here. So it was within the last <laughs> two or three years right. who um, this uh, room ordered a gallon and a half of milk. But and since they didn't, they don't, they charge by the glass. It was like $30 of milk. Wow. Yeah, because they, you know, it was supposed to be like an eight ounce segment. So he takes it up there, you know, on the bell hop, you know, bell, you know, bell hop cart. Right. And he uh, gets in there. And there is um, two black ladies going at each other in the bathtub. They're, what an interesting place to do it. They're, well, some manager or pimp of some kind and some cameras. And they asked him to pour the milk on the girls while they were fucking. I heard that story three times at that hotel. So oh, I yeah. think it's pretty true. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so apparently, so, so any, any of our listeners, if you ever see a porn with two black girls, two, two black lesbians going to each other with milk being poured on them, I. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, boys and girls, and everything else in between, to the 42 Podcast. We have been out for a while, and we apologize for that, but life does happen. Uh, Two weekends ago, I was in the great city of Seattle, interviewing for a job, and then last weekend, you know, things just happened, and I was tired. Do you know how hard it is to make a down and back to Seattle in 48 hours? No, I don't. I haven't done that. Is it hard? uh, Seattle, Pittsburgh to Seattle. I'm Ryan, by the way. And this is Ryan. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) Hi, y'all. You're a good friend in mine. Don't. (laughs) (laughs) To the left. Yes, as always. Sorry. I've been drinking a little bit. So this is going to be a loosey goosey episode. (laughs) I like it. Uh, so, uh, Pittsburgh to Seattle and Pittsburgh to London or about 30 minutes different air travel. What? No, wait, just say that again. Pittsburgh to Seattle and okay. Pittsburgh to London. London is about 30 minutes farther air travel. What? Why? Is that true? Is that how it's yeah. saved? Pittsburgh is, or Seattle is... Th- almost 3,000 miles from Pittsburgh. I mean, wow. I'm going coast to coast. That's so, incredible. So I get there, right? And it's, it's, it's a three-hour time change, which is pretty tough. So I get there, and it's like 6 o'clock in the evening. It's still sunny out. I sent you the pictures from the restaurant. It was super Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. But my body's going, hey, dude, it's 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> you know? Is that a weird feeling? It is. I've I never woke, done the coast to coast. I woke like up. At, that big a time change? I woke up at 4. Like, I just woke up at 4 because I, like, it was, it was 7, 7 30. And, like, to me, it was 7, 7 30 in the morning. It was like, my wife's like, hey, bro, it's time to get up. I'm like, weird no, feeling. you're wrong. <laughs> so I get weird up at, like, feeling. 4 and just, like, putts around my hotel room for three hours until the. <laughs> Yeah, until the hotel uh, breakfast bar opens up and go down there. So how did the interview go then? Um, it went well. Um, 
it is one of the, it's a weird position for me to be in because I really would like the job and they're going to pay me a lot of money, uh, six figures. Wow. And I am going to turn them down if they offer me the job. Oh, okay. Because I can't work for, like, I loved everyone I interviewed with. I loved them. They were great people. They were smart. They were intelligent. They were flexible. They were everything you ever wanted in coworkers. But the two people who would be my boss were such arrogant assholes that I couldn't do it. Quality of life decision. Quality of life, yeah. And the thing is, like, so, you know, like, a couple week, couple weeks ago, that big expose from Amazon came out. Like, how terrible working for Amazon actually is because... No, I didn't see that. Oh, it was a big deal. It was, like, in Time or uh, the New Yorker, New York Times, right. something well, like that. Okay. And it was all about how, like, you know, so many people, like... Uh, if you're not if you're working sixty hours, you're not putting in enough time at Amazon. Like that's just how it is, and they will rip you apart. You know, like so many people, like go home crying because like they have been just just so destroyed by their bosses and their bosses. And you know, I didn't put a lot of stock in it. And then I interviewed with two people who spent five years at Amazon, and those guys are jackasses. Really, like, just be- dicks, huh? Oh, bad. The thing is, is I do something. There's one thing I do in this world incredibly well. It's simulation modeling. Right. And the thing is, is I'm, I'm maybe the only second generation simulation model in the world. My dad is first generation. And uh, he is 30 years PhD, one of the best in the world. And I am right. damn near as good as he is. So when I say I am best in the world, I fucking mean it, and I have examples to back it up. And these people wanted me to do simulation modeling, but wanted me to do it in Excel and Python and not give me the tools to do it. They're like, they're like, well, I just want to make sure you know, you're good at what you do and not just the tool. That's like, that's like us saying, hey, JJ, what? We want to make sure.